on as we get ready for what should be a very intriguing lineup of guests that we have with us. Uh, we got uh, Iggy Magnus, who's on with us in the 8 o'clock hour, the last guest. Uh, Manu Allah will be on with us, Jeff Rosenblatt. And with me right now is Lohi Wallet. Rudy, what's going on? It's going well, and you? What are you so nervous for? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're so nervous, uh, Rudy. You have so much to talk about in the next 20 minutes here, you know? Uh, oh, wow. But before we get to that, just a couple of reminders. Um, first and foremost, we are getting closer and closer to the team pitches being done. There are a couple that are left over. Uh, but if you feel that there was a, a team pick that wasn't done properly, let us know. We can make the adjustments uh, moving forward. Um, secondly, uniforms, that is in full effect. All the scorekeepers know that you must have a proper uniform with a, the same colored uniform or within the same range of the color with a correct number, no tape, no marker number. If you don't have that, then you will not get the game or stats played for. That's nothing to watch out for. And also, as we approach the halfway point of the regular season, uh, some teams played four, five, maybe even six games by the time we hit uh, uh, February 14th of next week. Uh, we're at the halfway point. You need five games to be playoff eligible, so we always encourage teams to look at your roster and the team profile on the FPF website and to make sure that you have the correct number of games per player because if there if there isn't, we have to do an investigation and we rather you let us know ASAP before it gets too late when we hit like week 14, week 15 of the regular season and we can't really do much at that point. And last but not least, uh, something that Iggy and I will talk about when he's on with us is the um, the new penalty that's being called which is pretty much you must maintain your control or try to do the best you can with your momentum as you go towards the sideline dividers. Um, there have been teams that have been penalized for that where the player would go from their field to the other field because they're making a play, a catch, or tackle. So the rule is now you must be in control of your body as you approach the sideline. I know it's very tough. I know it's very tough to kind of uh, police it. But please take that into consideration. The reason why uh, there have been a lot of injuries with referees, uh, staff members, uh, players walking by on the, on the other side of the football field that don't see or anticipate the player coming from one end to the other end. So it's important that you guys know about this rule. If you do get penalized, it's a 10 yard penalty from where it was moving back. So, or moving forward, depending if it's a defensive player or not. So please be aware of that as we move along in the season. More and more penalties being called by that about controlling your body going towards the sideline, whether you're, you're the offense or defense. We'll talk more about that with Iggy a bit later on. Uh, anyway, uh, bring in our first guest. Uh, she's been hanging around loitering with us. Uh, Laurie Ouellette, who's here to talk about co-ed. One, two, and three, a little bit here. Uh, Lori, let me ask you this question. The Super Bowl or Valentine's Day is what? What is higher on your rank right now? Super Bowl or the Valentine's Day? Super Bowl. <laughs> really? Of course, it's always fun to see the Super Bowl and who's going to win. So, what is your top five foods that you look forward to in at the Super Bowl party that you might attend or host? Uh, wings, obviously. What uh, type of wings? Spicy ones or crispy, crispy spicy ones. They're, they're good. Like like honey barbecue, like you know, is there a particular yeah. style? Uh, I mean, honey is always good. Yeah. But any type of, any, any type of spice is fine. I like spices. So. Okay, so so we're looking at wings. All right, number two. Yeah. Uh, nachos. Anything oh. Well, well, anything like uh, like nachos. chicken nachos? I look at vegetarian nachos. Yeah, beef. No, beef or chicken. Like. Can you can you down an entire nachos plate? Like a whole bag? No, no, the whole plate. You know, chicken and all that that comes with nah, it. I can't. No, not entirely. Oh, <laughs> uh, Rudy, you're like you. Uh, in, in my heyday, yeah, I could have. Oh, I still okay. do it from time to time, but not not as much now. I have to make sure I look good. I don't want to look too fat, you know. No, of course, always. <laughs> of course. Uh, number three. What's your favorite third favorite food that you look oh, forward to? Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, any type of finger food is good. So what, I don't, what about that, that's, 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 my top two. that's my top two. I don't have any more. Well, like pizza, ribs, nothing like that. Well, pizza, not ribs. Really? Not, not my style. So is that what, what we're going to look forward to this weekend, wherever you're going to watch the big game on Sunday? Yeah, finger food. Finger food is indeed what it is. But by the way, did you see uh, Iggy, our boy, <laughs> went down to Orlando with um, Marvin and the guys, right? I did, yes. Did you see the photo on Alex Blaze's social media wall? 
on Instagram. I think Alex Blade before. Which one? Alex Blade. Yeah, and there's a picture of the guys on the beach, shirtless. Okay. And I'm looking at the picture. I go, there you have seven Mm -hmm. guys with no one around them. (laughs) It's pretty. Okay, I see it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's a bunch of guys having fun. Uh, Yeah, with no one around them, except for Sand. There's no one around them except for Sand. Yeah, what about it? There's no one around them. There's seven of them. There's not a single human being around them outside of those seven guys. Good for them. They're having fun. They're enjoying the time. I'm going to grill Iggy on that one when he comes on with, with the <laughs> Go ahead. Later on. Later on. All right. Uh, let's dive into it, uh, Lori. Uh, yes. Co-ed. Uh, let's go with Co-ed 1. Um, party Mix, they're in first in division. Who could be the biggest challengers to Party Mix in this division now? Uh. Up to now, I'd say IG team. I think uh, they're the only one who have who has tied the game with them. I think it was like second or third week. Uh, but uh, I think with Jinx, uh, Jinx as a mobile QB, he tends to run and scramble a lot. And he has the players, the receivers to make plays and get open. So I think the biggest challenge for party mix would be IG team. Because up to now, they've been winning every single game. What about my kiss my end zone? Um, because they kiss my end zone beat IG team uh, earlier this season. They well last week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, well that's what I meant to say earlier this season. Wasn't there? Right, but would they not be a challenger towards uh, party uh, mix? Yeah, they could be because they have the athletes for it. Also, they have a good roster, a good lineup. So it could be because they didn't play against right, not yet. Not, they, yeah, they haven't played party mix yet, but but party but Kiss Man Zone beat IG team, right? So would they not be the better team that can challenge them though? I think I'm gonna stick with my answer. If Jeans Lee is there, IG team is gonna be a, a, com- a competition for party mix. But if he's not coming back, then Kiss Man Zone would be the second one, indeed. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I think if Jeans Lee, and again, he's he has been there in, in a couple of weeks, but. Yeah. If he's not there, I, I think it changes the whole dynamics for IG it team does. and how they are on offense and defense because he's that emotional piece that they look forward to on, on both sides of the football. Yeah, he's but, a good player on both sides of the ball. So if he's not there, it it changes a lot. No, oh, quite no question about that. So in in that case, then um, you we look we know party mix are two on uh, three on one and kiss man zone is two on one. Yeah. The Boston Net is 2-0 right now. Yeah. Out of those three teams, the last remaining undefeated team will be who? I'm going to stick with Party Mix. They, really? Yeah. I'm I'm they have a good lineup if they keep their roster the whole throughout the whole season, I think they can go undefeated. Yeah. So so would you would you right now if you're gambling, I don't know if you're a gambler or not. No. <laughs> but if you are a gambler, would you take party mix or the field to win co ed one? Party mix. Really? You're, you're that confident they're going to run through this division? Yeah, they have an amazing QB. They, I think they, they added AJ Gomes and they have Anne Frédéric Tardif, who's an amazing player. Uh, she's doing a lot of plays. Uh, she's a stud. So, I mean, if, he, if, the, if uh, Francois keeps using them, they're gonna go far. Yeah, right now Deloria had 19 touchdowns, two INTs. Yes, uh, you look at the receiving core at Tardif uh, already 80, 88 yards, five touchdowns. So that's one TD for every three catches that she has. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Murphy's played two games. He's he's on eight for four touchdowns. I uh, mentioned AJ Gomes, what he can do for this team here. But yeah. in a sense, though, you look at the schedule, Lucky. Right, they get uh, zero sub, which is probably going to be a win for them. They don't play Kiss My Enzo until early March. And they'll play them twice in the last four weeks. Interesting. So, so it's not going to be easy to finish the season with with Le Parcinet, IG team and and um, Kiss Man Zone twice in, in a span of a month here though. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy games. It's definitely definitely going to be a challenge, but I think they're going to come up with the the big wins. Okay, on the flip side of things uh, of this division for Code One, uh, Lange, yes. you you look at. LPP and Zero Sub. Uh, both have not had a good start to their seasons. Uh, Zero Sub is 0-2-1. Uh, Le Petit Fuck is 
and two, um, who's more likely to rebound from their slow start and get themselves back in that playoff position? Uh, I'm going to cheer with zero sub. Uh, I just think that because they've been playing together for a while, they see they have chemistry. Sarah Parker has chemistry with all of her receivers. The defense, have, they have chemistry together when playing all together also. So I think they they could come up with uh, some wins towards the end of the season and possibly make the playoffs. I'm Well, I'm cheering for them. I really hope so. Well, so. you know what? I look at their roster. I mean, it's a very big roster that they have. Yeah, but uh, you look at Sarah Cormier, who's had a wonderful start to the season. Yes. Uh, Emily Carrier has also had a good start to the season. Pat Jerome, we know very well. Yeah. Um, but you look at Sarah Parker; she's off to a good start this year, and they get the Boston Net next on their schedule on Wednesday, February seventh, and party mix right after that. Yeah. So they don't really have an easy schedule. I mean, when you think about their next two games, three games, that could determine if they're going to be in play for that last playoff spot. No, I agree. It's not gonna. It's not easy games, but I think if they could pinpoint the the weaknesses from the other teams, they could adjust to it. And they have the coaches for it. See, they have a Pat Jerome and uh, their other coach that helps them throughout the the whole season. Also, so I'm sure they could get some wins in there. Is Pat Jerome the greatest FPF coach ever? I don't pers- I don't know him that well, but mm, I think there's. He's up there. He's up there with other coaches, for sure. Is he better than Bill Belichick, the coach formerly of New England? I don't know him. Exactly. 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 Would you uh, be better than him? <laughs> I take Belichick over Jerome any day of the week. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's just my answer, though. Uh, look, on to co two. Yes. Um, and this has been more intriguing this year for co two. Um, are you surprised that we have seven teams with three wins at this point of the regular season. So that means seven of the 16 teams in the playoff spots are three wins or better. Uh, I'm not surprised. I've seen, well, with 20 teams, it's a lot. And I've seen, well, I've seen all of them play. And I could see that there's a difference in levels. They're not, we're not the same level in Code 2. So I'm not surprised that they're, they're winning all their games up to now. But is this good or bad for co ed too then? I'd say it could be both. I'd say bad because when there's a clear like distinction between like the competition, it's gonna be like easy wins. It doesn't it doesn't mean that you're gonna win against the higher teams in the in the division, we could call it. Right. So no, it's it's a bad thing to <laughs> yeah, no, because the reason why I asked that question, Logie, because co-ed two is sort of like the middle point of the co-eds, right? It's division yeah. two for one and three. And you know, you know, Logie, you play in this division or you, you play in co-ed for many years now. Um, but there's always like the really good teams. You have a middle pack and then the, the really the teams that shouldn't be in that division. Always. And, I, and yeah, and, and I find in this division, though, Right, it's yeah. You have seven teams that three wins are better, which is good. But then you look at the bottom, middle to bottom, it's a big gap. I mean, you think about the bottom four, the bottom five. They're they're winless right now. Yeah, and it feels like you kind of know who the sixteen teams could be for the playoff spots by the time we hit mid-April. No, I agree with you. There's a there's a, a clear distinction between the teams. So among the three on three, among the three and O teams right now. Yeah. Uh, who is more vulnerable? Kiss my Christmas balls, pick six, or flash? Um, it's a pretty difficult question, but I'd have to go with flash. I've well, we've we've seen them play Monday, but um, <clears throat> see, as much as they have a, an awesome receiver, Jeremy Murphy, I think he he's the one that does most of the plays and the touchdowns and everything. So if a team is able to take away that read i think the qb she's gonna have a difficult time like throwing to the the other receivers but i think they're in the most uh, danger Otherwise, well you know i i we and i were both at heber yeah on monday and we, we saw them play um flash and yeah. juliette Bove has had a good start to the season not like you know uh not like a like a twenty touchdown star, but she's done well. She's made yes. some good reads. Yes, but you're right about Jerry Murphy, right? Because he's a CFL player playing in co-ed too. Yeah, 
defense. <laughs> but you you have Alex David, Chloe Bouchard, uh, Chloe Simard, very good players as well. Sarah Bureau is a very good player uh, yes. on the defense side of, of the ball here. I, I'm intrigued by Flash, though, Lugia. I, I think they might surprise. Uh, maybe not go undefeated, but I think they could win seven games um, or even be- eight. Yeah, I agree. It depends with who they play against, but see, I'm sure that I don't know the QB personally, but I've seen her play. She, she, she's good. She's good. But when I compare them to Kiss My Christmas Balls and Pick Six, I think they're more in danger than the other teams with the roster. So, what makes those other two teams better than Flash in your mind? But see, I know uh, Brady and uh, Chris, if I'm not mistaken, the QB for uh, Chris Olsen. Yeah. Yeah, Olsen. Uh, see, I've seen them play. Uh, they're playing with uh, the same roster as the previous seasons or somewhat similar. And uh, see, they've played in the FPF community before. And see, they, they know the the flag game. So I think that gives them an advantage. You know, you know what's too bad, though, is that what? Pick 6 does not play Flash or Kiss My Christmas Balls during the regular season. They don't. Oh, no, they don't. So, so if they play against, it's going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and look, I, I think it's too early to tell now because we're only in February and playoffs yeah. are not for two more months, but you kind of want to avoid being a two or three seed because if you end up being two or three, you're going to play one of those teams that we've listed yeah. earlier than expected. And and yeah, you know, Lord, you have to go through all the teams no matter what, regardless of order of teams, but you kind of want to avoid playing that team earlier than expected. Yeah, because if you play against them in the – the, the playoffs uh, as early as possible, then you might end up losing. Yeah, the, pretty the much. Yeah. Um, look, right now, defense play of the year, I was looking at it earlier today, uh, Thomas Chausse and Alexis Gaumont uh, yeah. on defense. They have some pretty good stats right now. If you look at their defense stats, INTs are almost identical. I think, I think Chausse has one pick six, I believe, right now. If you had to pick who could be the early favorite to win this award, you say who? Uh, I'd have to go with uh, Tomas Chossé. There's something about his uh, reading the field, reading the offense when he's on when he's playing defense. I don't know. He's always where the ball needs to be. Uh, he makes the interceptions. He 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 gives the ball back to his team, which then they go and score. So I think there's a great chance that Tomas Chossé is the defensive player of the season. I'm going to have to disagree. I think I got Gamal winning this award. Really? Uh, yeah, because I, maybe because of yesterday, he had two INTs and stuff. But, like, you know, Gamal has two pick sixes, a bigger part, and Chelsea has one right now. Yeah, but who did um, they play against? And that's big, right? Because that means you created 12 points for your team compared to the six that Chelsea has done. But I, I still think it's far away, but I think it's, it's going to be one of those close races that. You pick either or, you can't go wrong. But I just think oh. Gamal has a bigger impact on defense right now than Chose does, and I just think that he can he can win games for the Flash if it comes down to him being the difference maker for them to win or not. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, you go for Gamal, and I go for Chose. We'll see at the end of the season. Do you want to do you want to do a little side bet on this or what? We can if you want. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Uh, you you usually come up to the road show, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's put uh, cheese sticks. You like finger food, right? Yeah, we could put we'll do cheese sticks. sticks. Okay, so I have Gomol, you have Chaussee, right? Yeah. All right, deal. Perfect deal. Excellent. <laughs> uh, lastly, I know we'll talk very lightly here of Co Ed Three, and then talk about some of the social media stuff you have coming up here uh, this week. Um, from your from your viewpoint of what you see from Co Ed Three, what's caught your attention? If anything has so far. Uh. I mean, I don't follow Coed 3 a lot, but I know Michael Scott's thoughts. I've uh, played with the, their team. I subbed in, in, a, in a game, I think, two yeah. weeks ago. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a very different division. Uh, I mean, it's mostly beginner players, and they're, they're learning the game of flag, and see, they're there to have fun. So I think it's a really fun division to start off with. And yeah. I like Coed 3. It's uh... Coed 3 is different. I, I agree with you. Michael Scott's toss. The team that I'm watching out for is Thunder Villains. Terry Babalus, ref who officiates in this league as well, quarterback yeah. for Thunder Villains. Um, he's got a pretty intriguing team, right? I mean, uh, they 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 had that experience that you want from FPF. And yeah. I think – I know they're in fourth place right now, but I think they're the team to circle in terms of 
of them potentially winning it. And then you look at a team like at least we tried. And this is a team that you might be familiar with in terms of who's on the roster. And I'll tell you yes. right now uh, who's on the roster that you know very well. Daryl Dorsley, you know him very well, I would imagine. Uh, Sheldon Valerie, he's a very good player as well. I think at least we tried and 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 the villains are the two teams that I'm watching out for yes. um, in this division this year. I agree. They're both uh, two top tier teams. They, they they have players that they've played in the FPF for a while and so they know they know the flag game. So I think they're going to be competition against the other teams. No question. Uh, before we let you go, Lori, um, I know you do a lot of social media stuff for FPF. Yes. Um, so what do you have lined up? You and Chris Rive, you guys have collaborated on a lot of things together, which has been awesome stuff. So mm -hmm. from my uh, video, which I hope comes out soon, after I give him a haircut. Give him a haircut Friday, so we can do one next week if we want. Okay. Uh, but uh, what do you have lined up coming up for uh, FPF social media content in the week or so or coming weeks of February? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, this week we filmed the game of the week for the women's division, uh, Blur Put against Sub-Zero. So it's going to be coming out either – beginning of next week or middle of next week we'll see how it goes and we have a reel about COVID or COVID in general mm. of how it's going the challenges and then about the new rule of three uh, three girls on the field minimum and you like we, that rule i like it you know why you get to play offense <sighs> i always play offense <laughs> <laughs> i no, got that I I got that screenshot of you that Chris Rive posted up back in the summertime. Which I'll one? send it to you. Okay, it's such a funny picture of you, you dropping the football. Oh, stop it. Okay, I'll tell you my reason now. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean the 3v3, uh, well, I mean the three girls minimum on the field because um, I feel like it's integrating more girls in the division, especially in Cohen. Right. And it's just like a more fair play. There's a, an equally amount, equal amount of girls and guys on the field. And mm -hmm. it gives the chance more of girls getting more stats and uh, playing more. So I think it's a really good rule. I'll tell you this right now, Rudy. If I was scorekeeping you, I might alter your stats a little bit. <laughs> I knew it. Thank and God you I'm know the thing is? Field Wednesday. <laughs> if you need to uh, submit a stats request, it goes through me. Okay. I'll take some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lori, thank you so much for coming on with us as always. Uh, look forward to the social media stuff that you have coming out with uh, C-Riv uh, this week. Yes. And look forward to seeing you soon uh, at the football fields. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Bye, Lori. Bye-bye. Lori Wallet on with us here at uh, CTA as we continue on uh, talking about the co-ed. And uh, we'll bring in Manu Alaroi in the coming seconds here as we get ready to talk some Div 3 with him. Uh, are we ready to go with Manu Alaroi, gentlemen? Oh, we're just getting him ready to go as we team up, as we talk about Div 3 coming up here uh, on CTA, and uh, look forward to breaking down with him and uh, getting his thoughts on the division as a whole so far as we wait for him to... Uh, he's on the tarmac. I see him there. He's drinking his water right now. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's, um, if it's uh, avian water, if it's tap water, if it's bottle water. And we'll bring in Manu Alaroir in a couple seconds here. As uh, we welcome in the man himself, Manu Alahual. Uh, Manu, is that tap water? Is that bottle water? Is that um, what, what type of water are we looking at here? It's, water? it's tap water, um, but it's filtered through a Brita filter. Oh, that's high. <laughs> that's high end society, there, Br Brita man. We go. It's it's a start. It's a start. Uh, keep, keeping your body clean over there. Um, I have to. Of course, Manu. Um, bigger excitement for the Super Bowl or Valentine's Day next week? Man, I, I'm more excited for tomorrow. I got a, I got two games, two big games, so I don't really care about either of them. Oh, fair enough. Are you gonna watch the Super Bowl on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna watch, but I'm a bit disappointed about the teams that that made it because I, I, I would, I would have liked to see the Lions uh, underdog story. Would have been cool. Yeah, I know. Uh, it would have been nice to have Detroit in there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how this but goes. So, so let me ask you a question, game. right? So so Super Bowl is a very big event for get-togethers and stuff. I don't know if you're going to your friends or if you're hosting or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But what are you, what's your top foods that you look forward to at the Super Bowl? Uh, I'd say chicken wings for sure. What type of chicken wings? Uh, just the, the normal barbecue. I'm not a spicy guy, so it's, okay. it has to be just a – the the plane yeah um and i 
it's not really a food that you see in uh, in Super Bowl parties, but this year I'm a, I'm gonna bring my my biscuits. I love biscuits. I just I just love a good biscuit. Well, like, like like biscuits as in like cookie biscuits. Like um like a um, cornbread uh, cornbread biscuit. Okay, okay. I, I was trying to make sure. I was like, wait a minute, dog biscuits for the pet dog? Or I, I was not sure about. It's you know what? We'll, we'll start calling you the biscuit. Hey, I love it. We'll call you the biscuit from now on. I love and it. So those are the two top two foods you look forward to for a yeah. Weekend? Chicken wings is always a is always a go to because how many can you have? I'd say 12, 10, 12, but yeah, you're a bit of a lightweight there, Manu. Oh, I am a lightweight, but these things are expensive, Mo. In, in restaurant, I don't get them often because oh, you're it's... going to a restaurant, you're not going to someone's house. No, but like usually, but no, I'm going to someone else, but okay. usually I don't get it often. That's why I go for the, for the wings every time. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna offer you six pieces of wings here of questions. Uh, Let's go. Cool. Three. Um, so look, we're about uh, four games, five games through in Div yep. 3. The best offense is who in Div 3? Uh, I was looking at the stats and I, I have to give it to Beer Belly Brigade. We've been talking a lot about these guys uh, the past few times I'm, I'm in the, um, I was in the podcast, but it's it's hard to deny them. Beer Belly Brigade has um, 891 total yards, 21 TDs. Um, it's really, really impressive. You have uh, seven, uh, 714 yards uh, by the pass and the rest uh, by Alex Fafar running. It's an offense that explosive. And I, I've been saying, uh, I, I'm just repeating myself, but these guys, they want to win this this year. It's their time. They've been playing for a while together. And now it's all coming coming, uh, coming in as uh, as the season progresses. But if I give you another, another team, a uh, bit of a, um, not mentioned team a lot. It's Mongoose. Uh, yeah. I've seen played against a team uh, th- this past uh, Saturday at Brossard, and they they got a big win against a really really good defense, and they were able to move the ball uh, gradually with the, their their style. Uh, they had their own style t- to them. Uh, also, JF Dallos wasn't there that game. He's a big piece to their team, and they got 1,060 uh, 62 yards by far in uh, in the season. Uh, just by by the air, and that's very impressive. Um, right. I was, I was going to say, Beer Belly Brigade. If you look at the schedule, Manu, they got lightweight yeah. coming up uh, on the tenth, which I believe is this weekend. I believe. Yes. And then yes. they got Backer Blues, which is a decent defense. Yep. And they're playing some team called Diamond Bougie, which I never heard of. I don't know if you heard of this. Nice. Nice. Uh, <laughs> the next few weeks here. So, so the next three games will, will tell us yep. if they're a legitimate offense. That if you if you guys can't stop them. If lightweight can't stop them, and if backyard boys can't stop them, then maybe we have a dynamic offense that we're looking at right now. No, definitely, and I know, I know. But right, right now they have three and one, um, uh, one hundred thirty-three points four scored. Um, it's going well. Uh, I see them having a great, great couple of games. Uh, lightweight is going to be an interesting game. See how they fare out against against a team that I've heard uh, Simon Dagenet has brought a lot of younger talent. To his team, this is it's just like, it's I, like those guys brought the younger talent. Simon Dushan is like a forty-year-old man playing football. Uh, yeah, but you know, um, I don't know the team very much. But from what I heard, they they are really they are legit this season, sitting at three and zero. It's going to be a good game. Definitely lo- looking forward to to see uh, the results or even catch it if I can. Yeah, that that division we spoke about is the toughest division right now, right? Oh, I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy. I, I think I know we're early, but if you want to forecast it, uh, there could be maybe five teams that get out of that division in the playoffs. Oh, but yeah. that fifth team in that division might be stuck with a bad matchup in the early rounds of the playoffs. Yeah, well, it's 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 not like the fall uh, fall uh, fall playoffs where you play the top teams. Now, yeah. uh, regular season means a lot a lot more because if you finish in the in the top top seed, you get. Not only a, maybe a buy. I don't know how, how the the, um, the schedule works. Yeah, we're still trying to figure that out. Okay. You, you know, uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, sometimes a buy, or you get one of the teams that just got in the playoffs. Yeah. And like you said, it's for the teams that 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 just made it in. It's tough, man, to to go against like one of the heavy hitters, uh, especially with all the teams. The top few teams are going to be maybe undefeated. Right. 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 And and speaking of that. Um, in two weeks, I know we can maybe preview whether it's with Iggy or with myself next week, but yep. just looking at it, right, in that division, and I think it's Group B, I believe it is, Bruins, and yes. that's what she said. They're both 1-2 and two right now. 
Uh, they're both kind of running away from the pack in their division, but whoever wins this game, could could that determine the division winner at this point of the season by mid-February? Definitely, because you see you see it right there. Bruins, um, Chris, Chris Verro is is having a good, good season. He's playing in a couple of different uh, divisions, so he gets a lot of reps and it shows and Bruins got a really, really stacked roster. So this this game, like you said, is going to define who's going to take Group B. I think Bruins are going to get the win and just edge out. Uh, that, that's what she said. Uh, it's going to be a close game, though, but I just see the Bruins offense being too much. And after that, yes, I think Bruins, Bruins are, are just going to cruise for the rest of the season and no one's going to catch them in that division. But let's say... Let's say um... That's what she said wins that game. Oh, yeah. Back with a cruise, or do you think Bruce can still catch him and jump him? Oh, they can still catch him because they both would be three, uh, three and one, uh, three. Uh, no, that's what she said would be four and one. Bruce would be three and one. Yeah. So with still one game in end, I think they definitely can uh, catch him. After that, it's going to come down to uh, points against. So we'll see uh, who's the best defense. Yeah. Well, and look, you know, for, for that's what she said. After they play the Bruins, they play a Sharks team that's been underachieving this yeah, season. Yeah, that's what and I And then they get you guys um, early March-ish. Yeah. Um, and then Green Deal Human Beings back our boys the infantry. So, so like, for that's what she said. They, they have no room for error here. Like, they oh. if they lose this game, it could start, like, a, a fall for them because of who they have after the game against the Bruins in two weeks. Yeah, because, like you said, that, that Sharks game is – I know that they haven't been like performing as well as they they used to, but Corey Wolowski, he's he's gonna get there. You know, it's a uh, it's gonna take maybe a few games, but the receiver is gonna is gonna ca- catch the ball, and uh, they got some studs all over all over the field. Um, yeah. I think like one bad game doesn't define them. I think every team has a bad game. Uh, you can see it throughout all the division. Uh, just an example, uh, we're with with Idaho Utipins. We're we were 0 and 2 before a couple uh, a couple of days um, for, before Sunday, and yeah. we just picked it back up. So it's just a matter of time sometimes. But I think Sharks is going to be a tough game for that's what she said. They're just, they just they have so much firepower. It's crazy. So speaking of, speaking of tough games, Arush they lose on the yeah. weekend. Um, with that loss, do they open up the division for others in that group to kind of? take that away from them because had they won that game, they would have been four and one yeah. and would have had at least a two game lead on the next team and kiss my in-laws for first place. So with that loss, uh, Manu, does that open up Arush and maybe the division for, for it to be up for grabs? Definitely. Arush has the most game played. So already at the halfway of, uh, of their season at five game play, uh, kiss my in-laws, uh, They've they've been on a on a break recently. They just got a win against the infantry uh, with Brady Oanesian at, at quarterback. Did a really really good job uh, to dice up the defense of infantry, which is it's a tough defense to go against, especially with uh, uh, Ethan at rusher and all the all the guys. Uh, we we know them, uh, but yeah. So Kiss My In Law is going to be there. I think it's going to be tough for Rouge to keep that number one spot. And also, I gotta say, we gotta keep faith in Dirty Birds. I know it's not. It's not going well yet, but just give Quaid a little bit of time. They're one and two. I can see them having uh, six more wins, so finishing seven and three. I don't know about that. I don't know about hey, that. I just I have I have faith in my boys. Yeah, it's sort of like Dirty Bears are sort of like that team that is that's a, it's like, they're like a jeep, like an SUV jeep that's going on a very like creaky bridge that's about to collapse. Yeah, no. And, it's, and so they got to drive slowly here to kind of get out of it, right? Not put the pedal to the metal here. Yeah, but with their, I, I know it's not the same same team, but with the run they had in fall, just coming up short in the in the finals, still this team is has all the tools to 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 make it. So I think they're they're going to be right there with, uh, with Arush, just my in laws, Air Force One. We'll see about them. Uh, guys, just got to show up because. Man, you're getting blown out by um, uh, the Brotherhood. Like, it's tough, man. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this: though. I think Arush can. I think Arush will hold off the competition for a little bit longer. I think Kiss My Laws, Kiss My Laws, you're right. Will be the team that is going to catch up to them because they have two games in hand, right? So they win yeah, those two games, it. they jump them by one one game at least. So, right 
and and that could be the difference maker in what could happen right now. Uh, Mel's Angels. Yes. Uh, are they the sleeping giant in Division Three? They are, man. They are. It's, um, man. I, I really like this team. I really like Mel's Angels. They got a little switch because uh, Chris Rive was uh, supposed to be the quarterback for um, yeah. for for the season. Unfortunately, Chris has so many things going on. Uh, this man is all over the fields playing and also filming. Uh, he does an amazing job. Uh, shout out to Chris. Go check him out, CRV Media. Um, oh, he does stuff for us. Yeah, he does stuff for us occasionally. I had no idea. <laughs> but yeah, um, so Mel's Angels, They, I saw the game. They had AJ at QB. AJ is a confident, confident QB. So he's going to sling it. He's going to take some chances. He's going to move in the pocket. Uh, they, they got some inexperienced guys on the, on the squad, but Xavier Couture, man, this guy, watch him. He's really good. He made, like, I think every time I, I was looking at uh, Brassard, every time I, I turned my head, this man was making a play. He, he made a play on a post. Uh, man, AJ just threw it a perfect pass. He went and got it. Really impressed by, uh, by this team. And I think they, they're, they're going to they're gonna get the thing going. They also have uh, the cap space for Jinsley Alexi, which is also very scary. You can have AJ, Jinsley on the team with the younger guys. Yeah, I like them. Uh, the, their biggest game will be uh, at the end of February when they play Brotherhood. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. yes. That, that, that's the game. That, yep. That's the game right there. Hey, you know this game is going to be heated for sure. Oh, no no question, right? And I just think – I know we're looking far ahead here, but that could that could determine who could very well, very well have a higher playoff seed in, in the whole process here. So that's why I think it's going to be very fascinating how this plays off for them as yep. well. Um, as we approach the Super Bowl break here, Manu, yes. the team that concerns you the most is who? Man, there's a few teams, but I'd say from spot 23 to 26, man, the, it, it, I'm really concerned for these teams. If they don't pick it up by then, it's going to be a long season because wide open bar at 0-3 in France Bay for me, 0-3, Speed Academy. Man, I'm, I was hoping more from these teams, but they, they're in trouble. For sure, but they're already in the red. So if if I give you a team in the in the green, I'd say blue chips are in trouble. They gotta pick it up, yeah. man. Because they yeah. got the talent, they got the guys. Senders Ahmad, man. I've been saying it. Just throw him the ball. He's gonna make it happen. Just throw him the ball. He's gonna he's like an armada out there. The Senders Ahmad, man. He, a big ship. But the quarterback, he's gotta he's. He's um, he's so fast. I, I don't I don't get his name right right there, but man, he's shifty. He can run every time. But once you take away his run and you put a good rusher on him, the offense kind of kind of staggers. So just try to run your offense through Sanders. Uh, the other teams will know, but try to stop it. Yeah, Jordan Mitchell is the quarterback. Yeah, Jordan Mitchell. Yes. Too. Yes. Yeah, I think they, they should be better than what they are. I think they've underachieved so far, but uh, maybe they make a run for it. We'll, we'll have to see about that. <laughs> Um, we'll see. La- last question for you, Manu. Yes. Um, are you surprised by the high volume of interceptions thrown by quarterbacks in this division? You have 14 quarterbacks with four or more INTs this season. Man, I don't get. Uh, I don't get it. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, there's there's less ball protection. I feel like teams are maybe willing to take more chances and just like. Yeah, I think they 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 don't consider picks as bad as maybe it is in Division One, Division Two, because we know that defenses are really strong in both uh, both sides, uh, both teams. I've, all the defense in Div Three are good, so I think that's just teams trusting their defense and are willing to take more chances, and quarterbacks end up with more picks. But at the end of the day, yes, picks are important, but I wouldn't say that. It's a, a game breaker. I think uh, getting stopped on fourth down in the red zone, stuff like that is is harder than a pick because you can get it right back. Yeah, I'm curious though. We don't have the stab. I'm curious how many of these quarterbacks have thrown pick sixes. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting like where those picks happen. Yeah. No, really. Really, it would be, right? Red zone. Does it happen yeah. in your own? Like, it, it's a fascinating point you bring up. 
you know, about how this plays out for this division. But it'll be fascinating to see this plays moving forward here as well. Uh, Manu, before we let you go, um, yes. what do you have lined up for us for Div 3, man, in the, next, in the coming weeks here? Hey, man, uh, I know guys have been asking for the articles, and I'm sorry. Uh, it's really hard to cook up something good, but I'm in contact with the, the main man, Ignacio Valdez Manzanaro. He's not the and... main man. <laughs> no, but after you, Mo, after you. <laughs> But, but did, you, did you not see his beach body picture that he took with him and Alex Blaine, these guys in Orlando? Of course. I asked Lohi for her comment, right? It was seven guys and no one else around them. It was a body of water stand and seven shirtless guys with dad bods. Just having fun and enjoying the sun, huh? Are you, are you jealous, Mo? Are you jealous? No, they weren't wearing sunscreen. They, they're going to hurt themselves in the long run, you know? But yeah, but yeah as you see with your article, perhaps coming because, out in the next few weeks here. Yes, we will do. Excellent. Manu, thanks so much, brother. Enjoy your uh, biscuits and enjoy the yes. chicken wings on Super Bowl Sunday. And look forward to seeing you soon, my friend, whether it's through your article or through the football fields. Thank you, Mo. Uh, always a pleasure uh, talking with you. Always fun. Uh, looking forward for next time. Absolutely, Biscuit. We'll talk soon, brother. See you, Mo. Take care. Manu Alaroa here with us for Div 3. And uh, on the tarmac, we have Jeff Roseblatt getting ready for us right now. And we'll talk Div 2 with them. Div 3, very, really fascinating right now how this is kind of unfolded. There's one superpower division in Group D, which could very well have like eight teams at 7-3 and three and oh, whatever it is. And uh, it's going to be fascinating how this plays out moving forward here. And, you know, on to Division 2 and what we have lined up for Div 2. And now it's more of a not cutthroat yet, but we're getting a clear-cut image of how this could play out here. Uh, gentlemen, are, are we ready to get on our next guest? Oh, here we go. Our next guest is a wealthy man of quarterback passing yards. It's our man, Jeff Roseblatt. Jeff, how you been, brother? Oh, Jeff's volume is off. We'll get that corrected. Yeah, we'll get Jeff uh, corrected on his uh, sound check right there as we'll get him back here. Uh, Jeff, can you hear us, my friend? Oh, we can't hear him yet. Oh, we can't hear him yet. We'll get that corrected with Jeff Rosenblatt in the coming seconds here as unfortunately. A little bit fumbling right now. We'll get that organized with Jeff. So, like, Div 2 is happening right now uh, with what's going on right now in this division. And, uh, look, cap-friendly Braves, we know what, they all, what they're all about. And uh, we're now joined by Jeff. Jeff, can you hear us, my friend? Oh, we can't hear Jeff yet. So, we'll, we'll get that corrected. We apologize for the uh, technical difficulties. We'll get that uh, corrected with Jeff. So, and now we'll hopefully get Jeff here. Jeff, are you, can you hear us now, my friend? Oh, we can't hear him. Uh, Jeff, man, you're, you you go with the, the mime approach here. Yeah, we'll have to uh, get that corrected here. We'll get him rebooted here. We'll get him rebooted. We'll get him uh, asked for the exit. We'll have him come back in. We'll get him back in a minute here. We'll get that corrected right now. So, look, Cat Friendly Braves right now are 3-0. Uh, an unbelievable team with, with their offensive defense here. Two ACs really picked it up of late. But the team I'm looking out for is Mangoose, right, and how they've been so far. Ambush has been okay. I thought they'd be better than what they are. Skill Bees have underachieved. I thought they should have been at least 2-1 at this point of the regular season. Uh, Stoics, they had a good start to the season, but have not found out yet. Had, has, they have not found out their groove yet to find themselves back in the top half of the division. But we'll see how this plays out now. And uh, are we now joined by Jeff? Can you hear us now, my friend? Are you good to speak to us? Oh, not yet. Not yet. We'll get that corrected. Um, but you know, a team that I'm surprised is that Dirty Birds Plus, they're in the Reds right now, besides Kiss own four. This is a team that went very deep in the spring season, besides Kiss, and now here they are, kind of you know, literally drowning in the water of the dip two ocean, not knowing how to figure it out moving forward here. So I'm not sure what they can do to get forward and how they can get things organized. They've always carried a big roster of, of players, and they're running into that same problem again with how many guys they have. I know they have guys who played a lot, but again. Could they get that consistent roster to work forward is for them as well moving forward here? So, again, we'll figure this out right now with Div 2, and we'll get Jeff Rose back on with us, and we'll get him back on with us. Hopefully, we'll get that corrected with his sound check, Mike, as well. Iggy Magnus will join us at the top of the hour as our last guest for Div 6, and then we'll get that figured out there as well. But, look, for now, for Div 2, I just think that it has a really good panache to it. It's got a good flavor of teams who've done really well so far in Div 2. Uh, aside from besides Kiss being at the bottom rung of the division, um, you look at the top six, right? Bless has now picked up their flow. 
Uh, Rennet wants to start in the middle right now, but I think they will figure it out. They're one of the highest scoring teams in this league and have given up the most points as well. Uh, but again, 2HD, they, they are always going to be a tricky proposition no matter how you look at it. So I just think right now in this Division Two as a whole, it's going to be fun to see how this plays out for whoever wins this uh, regular season uh, conference right now. And one thing that I want to see, and I'm going to call them out on this, is show me what you got, uh, Blue Ballers, and hashtag an R. I know hashtag an R has gone through a, a, a tough season of injuries. Um, Travis Moses out for the year, unfortunately, with a lower body injury, which is too bad because he's a fine football player that we've seen. And it's it's too bad that we don't have him playing uh, this season. Hopefully, he'll come back next year uh, fully healed and ready to roll again. And uh, we'll see what happens with Hashtag and R because they've not played well so far. Uh, are we now joined by Jeff Rosenblatt here? Jeff, can you hear us? Can you speak to us now? Yes, sir. There we go. All right, Jeff. We can finally hear you, my friend. Jeff, thanks so much. But, but Were you lying down in your bed? Was that what you were doing? <laughs> all right so jeff uh two questions for you two for one question here uh bigger day for you valentine's day or the super bowl uh it's valentine's day are you crazy if, if my wife heard this and i said super bowl i'm out on the streets so it's for sure valentine's day <laughs> wink wink <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, w- what's your go-to food or foods that you enjoy on Super Bowl Sunday? I go classics. It's it's uh buffalo wings. What flavor? Um medium. I don't like to do it too spicy then it ruins everything else. Uh <laughs> so, some nice uh, chips and salsa. Uh good good drinks, a little booze, some some decent desserts, you you know, the the classics. What do you have planned for Valentine's Day dinner then? I got some, some of the bull. I got some. I got some, for Valentine's Day. I'm going out to a very nice romantic restaurant with my wife because she's she's my number one receiver. Can, can I take a guess where it is? Go. Is it the restaurant in in, uh, in the CN complex in Brossard to watch some games <laughs> from, uh, from the windows? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're always working. We're always scouting. So <laughs> Valentine's Day is no different. Me and the wife go, and we're we're scouting some of the D six players to bring up. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, so let's dive into it. Um, yeah. At this point, of, I know you're involved in Div two, obviously, but at this point right now, do you think there's a clear cut favorite for Division two? Uh, let me just pull up the standings here. Um, I mean, look, it's 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 always easy to say that the Braves are 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 the favorite or the number one seed because you know they've proven that. Uh, that they are that and have had success over the years. But honestly, there is so much talent in this division. I think there's such a, it's really clustered. I think any of the top, honestly, any of the top 10 teams, in my opinion, could, uh, could win this, win this championship. So I would say if I had to give a nod to anyone, uh, maybe a slight nod to the Braves, but there are some teams right below them that I think are going to give them a real, um, a real shot this season. Yeah, I, I think, I think Ticklers they they they, they picked it up for me. I know they played a, a underman terror squad roster on, on Sunday in Loyola, but you know they they kind of had a slow start of the gates because they tied the bees week one and didn't look like themselves. I think that's the team I'm looking out for at this point. Uh, you know, as we approach the halfway point, Jeff, that. Maybe they're the one that can give Cap Friendly Braves a run for their money as being the best in Division Two. I mean, that team has an offense that is arguably the most potent offense in Division Two. When you have a guy like Jordan Panetta throwing the ball, who, in my opinion, is a completely underrated quarterback. For me, I, I you know I used to know him more as a receiver, but this guy is absolutely one of the best quarterbacks in the division. And then obviously you have the two-headed monster of Adam Rosen and Dan Mancini, who are Division One caliber All Stars. Um, that's going to be a very difficult offense to stop. They also have a good rusher, some good other pieces. So Ticklers for me are absolutely a team to watch. Um, what's going on with Poseidon's Kiss? Their own four, and and this is not a team that we thought we saw back in the spring season run the table on everyone in their division back in spring. 
Yeah, I mean, I I, I called the finals in, in the spring. They were there. So to me, it's an absolute shock that they're uh, winless so far. Uh, obviously, guys like Rocco and Jared are, are stars. So it's, it's you know, I'd have to check their schedule. I don't know if they played some tough teams or they just haven't been connecting or had some roster issues. But that's uh, obviously a complete surprise going from getting to the finals in Div B to to starting 0-4 is, uh, is a definite shocker. Well, here, they lost to you guys week one uh, by one point. Uh, week two, I beg your pardon. Lost to Mangoose uh, by 19. Lost to Ambush by 15. Lost to Bless Up by three. Their schedule after that, they get um, Cap Friendly Braves on the 25th of February. Uh, Skill Bees, Stoics. So it, it gets a little bit easier after Cap Friendly Braves, but do you think they can rebound from their own fourth start and get themselves back in the playoff position? Oh, we just uh, we were missing Jeff right now. A little bit of a glitch. We'll get that corrected with Jeff, as uh, he had a bit of a fumble right there. As asking about the uh, schedule for besides Kiss, uh, as uh, Jeff is now on the tarmac. We'll get that organized with uh, Jeff in a couple seconds here, and uh, we break down dip two with him. Jeff, um, can you hear us? Can you uh, converse with us now, my friend? Hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, my friend, brother. So I asked you, I asked could, you they could they rebound, rebound besides, besides Kiss, kiss to, make a run? to make a run? I think they can, but, you know, uh, to be honest, they've had a brutal schedule so far. Uh, obviously, maybe it gets a little bit easier, but, uh, again, this division is so tough that, uh, you know, everyone has a really tough schedule. Just uh, every game is against someone that could – in theory, be a contender for the for the ship. So, I think they can turn it around, but I think it's it's going to be tough. Uh, bless up! Uh, they start to make a move up the ladder now. They're, they're two and one. Same thing. They came out of, out of the blocks a little bit slow than before. But I look at their schedule now, Jeff. For bless up, they got Mangoose, Terror Squad, Stoics, Dirty Birds, Hashtag and R. Um, those five games, I, I think they have a really strong chance to be seven and one. By the time we hit mid March. So to me, in those five games, they're favored in every game. Yeah. Um, don't sleep on Steve Harpersod, that's for sure. You know, no matter what anyone says, what it looks like, this guy gets it done season after season, year after year. Um, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think I see seven and one. Um, it, they're just a team that that just knows how to win. The, the the offense gets it done. They're underrated on defense. They get big picks when they need to turn the tides of a game. And you know, Steven is is a leader, an experienced guy. Um, I see seven and one. I agree with you. Yeah, I, I think, and if they get to seven and one, I think they're 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 challenging Ticklers and CFB for one, two, and three of the other group, along yeah. with you guys. Yeah, I mean. If you, if you, t yeah, well, I'm not going to talk about my team, but if you tell me <laughs> that the top three were Braves, Ticklers, and Bless Up, that would not be a surprise to me at the end of the year. Right. Um, of the one win teams right now, and there's a bunch of them, right? You got Skills Bees, Terror Squad, uh, Blue Ballers, Stoics, Hashtag NR, and Dirty Birds Plus are all one win right now, Jeff. Um, could one of these teams have five, maybe six wins because they're all talented in their own right at with their roster that they have? currently um give me blue ballers because to me fred dupuy when he's playing well is as good as any quarterback in fpf that goes without saying and if you look at that roster he has some very 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 athletic guys that can get it done on both sides of the ball so to me i think you know i watched fred's last division one game even though they lost he was almost mistake free so Give me, give me blue ballers to make a run, maybe win three, four games in a row, and uh, get in the mix with uh, some of the top teams in the division. Yeah, they got Ezekiel Tiad, Darius Simmons, uh, Zach, um, Zachary Lexi, Frank Hogue, who we you know very well, Mendel Joseph as well. So they and LPT Bedo, right? A guy that he's very comfortable with as well. So they do have some uh, game breakers in that one. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, uh, t sorry, not Terra Squad. Uh, sorry, Terra Squad. That's what I'm gonna say. Terra Squad. I think they, if they get their act in order here, Jeff, 
Um, they can make a run for four wins. I think five could be in their in their cards if they are healthy and they're ready to go. They've always been underachieving since the fall cup of, of last season. So give me Terror Squad to be the one that can get five, maybe six wins if it really falls their way. Um, taking away your view, because you are a quarterback in this division, the best quarterback rec- wide receiver duo is who in Div 2 right now? <sighs> wow, it's a tough one. Um... You know, uh, we already mentioned them. I have to go with, and it's and it's a double. I have to go with Panetta to Rosen slash Mancini. It's just these guys have been playing together for years. Um, I don't think I could pick one over the other because they're both unbelievably talented. Mm. And to me, that that combo is slash trio is pretty much impossible to stop. Um, there's a, there's a few that come to mind. There's, you know, Santomo to Santomo on the skills bees. That's one that's brothers, been going yeah. on for years. Yeah, the brothers. And there's a new one. It's not crazy new, but give me uh, Ben McMahon to James Drysdale, which could be a very serious one coming up the ranks over the next few seasons. But I'd have to say right now, give me Panetta to Rosen or Panetta to Mancini as the as the top. I got a nickname for, for Benny and, and James Drysdale. Go. Short and thin. <laughs> yeah yeah that works I'll, I'll say this though right if you had to pick one like you mentioned uh rosen and mancini uh being your one and one a but if you were the quarterback of ticklers and you had to make a clutch throw last play of the game to win a football uh like the championship for div two who are you throwing that ball to is it mancini or to rosen <laughs> it's literally an impossible question. It's literally flip a coin. Um, yeah, I honestly can't even answer the question. It's they're they're both just tremendous. I guess uh, I honestly can't answer it. I don't know if you have an opinion, but I, I can't I can't answer it. I, I think you want the the acrobatic emphatic catch, like you know the like toe tap, you know on the on the tight wire type of thing. You go Rosen. Okay. But if you want that like bulldozer type of catch, like not like physically, but I'm just seeing that this the, the presence of how he is when he makes that that reception. Uh, Matt Cheney's your dude. Like you know, it's like he's explosive, and I think Rosen is explosive in the air when it comes to those fifty fifties. I can see that, and I don't know if you've seen Mancini's arm, Mancini's arms lately. I don't know how you pronounce. It. I think Mancini. Uh, the guy's jacked, so uh, he's, he's worked out a couple of times. He's worked out. He he's got some yeah. guns, and uh, I'm not sure which of the two of them is faster either. They're both insanely fast. I'd like to see them race, uh, do a 40 yard dash, and see I think which Rosen one wins. wins that. I think Rosen wins that. I, I think Mancini might have a better first 10 yards, but I think Rosen wins the long view of that race. Okay, we're gonna have to see it. We're gonna make it happen. We'll make it happen during the halftime of, of our when we do the finals of Div Two. Uh, sorry, I won't be there. I'll be on the field, but uh, nice try again. <laughs> <laughs> Last question for you. Uh, Mangoose, are you on a wait and see approach with them so far? Kind of lurking around, doing well so far out of the, out of the blocks in Dip 2? I've been talking about Nick Schaefer for the last three three seasons. This guy is just getting better and better uh, every season. The guy's making much better decisions, throwing way less picks. We all know the arm talent this guy has, which is second to none in this division. And he started to build his roster with uh, maybe less of his friends and more of some skill players. So his right. roster is getting better. The supporting cast is getting better. I think he's a great leader on the team. Uh, he's also a super nice guy. There are a bunch of yeah. really good guys on that team. There's a few of them that I try to even recruit because I think they're going to be studs, especially defensively. And so to me, the offense and the defense are – where they need to be they're 2-0 and they look great they're another team that needs to be in discussions for for the top of the division yeah i i think it's wait and see i think a couple more games under the belt can really give us a better sample size of what they are so i'll, I'll hold off on them for now and see what happens all right before i let you go uh, are you watching the bachelor in the background of your tv screen in your room because i can see the corner uh, of the tv screen it's actually law and order svu Oh, SVU. Okay. Yeah, SVU, which has been a favorite of mine for years. So uh, 
Don't know. I don't know if you know about Detective Benson and Detective uh, Elliot Stabler. Those are my two guys. Those are my yeah, two I'm, I'm, a perf- I'm a peripheral fan of Law and Order. I'm more of the original guy of Law and Order. You know, that's fair. I went SVU because I'm 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 not not normal in the head. So that's how we do it. I always I always thought it was SUV, whatever reason. You know, because you always think the, you know the acronym SUV SVU. Yeah. You know, you know. But anyway, it's, it's, you're right. close. You're close. Close enough. I was off yeah. by the switch of letters. Anyway, I'll let you go enjoy Law and Order. Jeff, as always, brother, thank you so much for joining us with us here on CTA. And I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in the booth with me on May 5th. I won't be there, but uh, my pleasure, as always, to be here. You call me when you need me. And I'll, when you're commentating our game in the D2 Finals when we're on the field, I'll give you a few winks uh, during the game. Don't worry. From the sidelines with your sound review, excellent. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, boys. Great job Take as care. always. Have a good one, Jeff. Thank you so much, Thanks. brother. Peace. Jeff Roseblatt, Dip 2 quarterback, Dip 1 quarterback with us. Um, as he's, he's enjoying the, yeah, Iggy's going to join us in a few minutes here. We'll get Iggy Valdez. Uh, is Brett joining us or I thought it was Iggy joining us? Okay. I see. I, I'm sorry for the uh, long pause here. Uh, uh, the Nightingale, Ali Reza is just telling me in my ear that Brett Bachman will be joining us here on, on the, uh, Oh, so I hope it's really soon because I, I can't go solo for that long here. But uh... <laughs> so anyway, I, so night goes telling me in my ear that I got to wait because Brent Bach is, uh, is on his way. So hopefully we'll join my Brent in the coming minutes here. I'm going to take a quick 10 second break of water so I can get myself re uh, get myself hydrated again because we'll have Brent on talk about Div 6. Give me two seconds here, people. All right, welcome back. Uh, Div six, we're gonna talk some as well with uh, Brent Bakken. And um, here's the thing about Div six that I that I've I've caught a few games this year in Div six, and um, a team that I'm really been impressed and got to see them firsthand was on Saturday the Pigeons, who have by the way the coolest uniforms. Uh, they're taking the Jacksonville Jaguar uh, template of their uniforms, and um, I really like their uniforms. And anyway. It goes beyond the uniforms for pitches, but they really showed me a lot of uh, in, in their win that they had. Um, their defense is really good. I, I, they they have a good rotation on defense of what they built up. Um, they are ball hawks. They play very sound with their defense as a whole, and what's really made them really good is their pass rushing. I mean, they 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 have a rotation going on for them. Uh, Andrea Aquino has done really well. Six um, INTs. Uh, Luca Chiri Costa as well has, has three, three sacks and six sacks. Very a big one for Aquino. But the, look at the team INTs. You have five in, as a whole and a boatload of PDs. And their defense has been decent. They've not given up more than 25 points once. That was meat fillers in week one. Since then, no fly zone, 18 points. Uh, the Super Turbo, now that six points they play. LFD coming up, and then they got Jurassic Park Rangers after that. Pigeons will play Royals. Uh, McGill Swim Team. They can have a chance here to really go and be maybe five and two, uh, five and three, six and two, whatever it is. By the time we hit the week eight, week nine mark here. So I believe we have Brent Bach ready for us, uh, uh, Nightingale. Is that, uh, is that what it is now? All right, here we go. Let's bring in. Uh, uh, can we blur out his uh, his his hat though? His hat uh, is not uh, accepted in the FPF world here. Uh, let's bring in Brent Bach and Brent. Good evening to you, my friend. Yes, please. Can you, Omar, can you blow out blur out his hat for us, please? We can't. Anyway, Brent, welcome in, my friend. Thank you. I I know Mo, you're not familiar with winning teams, so I mean, you know, me being a Niners fan, you being a Raiders fan, it's all right. I'll school you. I'll school you, son. I'm That's sorry. Fine. I'm sorry. Oh, you beat us in the preseason. I'm sorry. My, my, my bad. We ended three last year. In nobody in except bad. for you. That, that, see, we're in the real Super Bowl. That preseason win that you guys have over us, that's your Super Bowl. It's fine, though. It's cool. It's all right. Whatever you and want. Goes on, you, you can believe whatever you want. I, I'm, I'm shocked you guys didn't go back to Santa Clara to go practice in, in that uh, bootleg mm-hmm. jeans stadium versus Levi Stadium. That's even the real I, I, I was there in August, my friend. It's a beautiful stadium. A be- a beautiful it's held by pillars. Friend. It's not even an actual stadium. It's a terrible it's, stadium. It's, 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 not, it's not UNLV, but it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. You guys right. are closer to the Montreal than you are to San Francisco. Listen, us coming to your stadium, my friend, is bringing winning to your stadium. Oh, Las yeah. Vegas is oh, familiar yeah. with that with the Raiders. It's, oh, it's really? Fine. 
I'm it's sure right. it is. I'm sure it's it right. is. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Don't worry about that, though. You see, got the tag off the brim of the hat. Eh? It's uh, very. Don't worry about that, my friend. Don't worry. It's a vintage hat. You don't worry. I'm sure it is. All right, uh, Brent. Before we, we start this conversation, I've been asking this question for all of our guests tonight. I'll ask you the same question. Um, more important on the calendar, Valentine's Day or Super Bowl Sunday? Super Bowl Sunday, 100%. Not even close. So can we get your girlfriend on and, and have her? Super Bowl Sunday. 100% oh. Super Bowl Sunday. She knows it too. She knows it too. Listen, Valentine's Day is important. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, you got to be nice to the ladies any day. You got to okay. be nice to the ladies any time, every time. You know what I mean? It can't just be one day of the year. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Then. We'll, we'll, I know. We'll... I know. Mo Khan, you're your friend. You're your friend with your left and right hand. But I mean, you know, for real, for real people to have, you know, a significant other, you got to be. That's you fine. Be nice so your your, your your top go to foods on Super Bowl Sundays? What? I got to start with chicken. Actually, I just picked up some chicken wings. Um, I got some chicken wings yesterday, and um, yeah, I'm not picky, man. I mean, there's a lot of garbage you can eat, but for for me, yeah, chicken wings, and I'm pretty much good. That's it? Maybe pizza. Maybe pizza. Pizza. I thought I thought you'd be talking about like tang and, and rice krispies and no, that, that, that's the Mokan delight, my friend. That's a Mokan special. No, 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 no none of that for me. That's not my delight, that's for sure though. I you know, I'm the man of the people, my friend. That's what it is, my friend. I'm the man of the people. In your own mind, yes. In your own mind. Fair enough. Don't worry about that. All right. Um the most overrated team in Div Six in your mind is who at this point of the season? Uh, that's a good question. Um I want to say the free agent squad just because they haven't really beaten oh. anybody yet. I know we're talking about them a little later. My, my bad piece. I love you, dude. Ego, obviously. But, I mean, um, I don't know. Look, in, look at the schedule. They beat the DG Shotters. They beat the Royals. They have five dealers. I mean, wake me up when they beat, like, you know, like a certain – okay, no disrespect. But wake me up when they beat, like, a top, top elite team. Well, okay, we'll, we'll get to them soon. We'll get to them soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I can but, pick someone else. I mean, there's other teams you can look at, right? In terms no, no, of no, no, for sure not. But I'm surprised because, you know, this is a team that, I mean, look, we'll talk about them now. We'll talk about Free Agent Squad now. Okay. But so you're not going to be on their bandwagon, essentially, for what the question was going to be for you about being the bandwagon or not. So you're off their bandwagon from the, from the jump. I'm off. The, I mean, listen, okay. Uh, they have some, there's some good players on their team. I mean, it's. I was talking to Pease actually the other day about, about them. I mean, listen, they have some talent. They, they should win games. I mean, they're expected to win games, right? I mean, they're like, hey, look, looking at the roster right now, Dustin, best at receiver, obviously, then you got Pease, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, are they a good team? Yes. But, again, they haven't really beaten anybody. They, talk to me in the second half of the season, right? I mean, you, I'm looking. I have a schedule right in front of me, right? I mean, Mutation, Demons, Cavaliers of Rohan, Fire and Blood, Shalmany Choats, Queens. I mean, schedule's not exactly the toughest. Yeah, but so see, not this college. defense is looking like the Raiders' defense against the Chiefs on Christmas Day, which you take a blueprint of, where they stop teams. They've not given up more than, uh, I believe, what, 18 points in the game uh, to an opponent. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right, yeah. For week one and week, I'm oh, sorry, well, technically week two and week four, that's the highest they've given up. Is uh, Sorry, actually, no, sorry, week one. Yeah, 18 points. I mean, so th- that's impressive. But then again, you got to look at the, the 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 caliber of opponent that they're playing, right? I mean, the Royals. Uh, okay, they're two and two. They're a decent team, wrong, but I mean, it's not as if they're you know they're, they're knocking off like the best of the best in Division Six. Mm-hmm. And I just I just want I want I want I want to say hold on for a bit before we jump the gun. The Royals are a decent team. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, are, are they one of your top three or top five teams in all Division Six? I don't want to put them there just yet. All right, so that's pigeons. So pigeons on the other side, are they a sneaky good team in your mind? I think they are. They are I, I think they're yeah. potential. Yeah, so I got to score keep their game last Wednesday in Lavelle, and I, I like what I saw. I, I really like what I saw. They, they have a mobile quarterback uh, who, who likes to fling a deep. I actually wrote about that a bit in my article uh, this past week. He takes one too many deep shots, but again, he does have the weapons. I'm drawing a blank on his name. My apologies. I'm looking up his name right now. Um, they have... They don't have a lot of height, but they have a lot of speed. They have a, they have a lot of grit, which I think is an underrated quality in FPF teams. Um, they have a lot of guys who are not afraid to go after the ball when the ball is in the air. The guys like Anthony DePescio, uh I, I came away being impressed. I think their quarterback, he's good. He just needs I, – I remember talking to one of the receivers during the game, and I believe it was uh, Mass uh, – here it is here Ch- – Chibicosta. And he was throwing – and it's just – 
he went deep a little too often and gets no flies on for my liking. He was he was passing up a lot of wide open passes in the middle of the sideline, a whole switch of money, the, the 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 middle ends, you know what I mean? So I think but that comes with experience, right? So they're a team that has talent, they have all the speed in the world, they play a nice physical style, which I love to see in FPF because some teams don't do that. I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They just need a bit more experience, right? They need they need to have some more games under their belt. But I think definitely in the second half, it's a team to look out for. Yeah, I, I think I, I got to score keep them on Saturday. They played um, uh, Super Tobo Navet, and uh, exactly. it wasn't it was it was not even a close game. Like the defense had like ten yeah. sacks and like a couple of ints, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But they they showed a lot to me. I think they have great potential. I think they can run the middle middle pack of their games coming up and beat a five and three team. Or maybe six and two if it really yeah. goes their way. Uh, but you're right, though. I, I think they have to kind of finish off drives, and that's where they lacked in that game where they were up comfortably at halftime, and they they just kind of allowed that vet kind of hang around, and then they put them away yeah. in the last five. But you know, if you want to be a really good team or a great team, you have to close them out early and finish them off by early second half, not getting any chance for the rest of the game. No, hundred percent. I mean. You go back. I mean, I'm seeing what you're talking about, right? They were up 25 nothing at halftime, and then the second half they score one touchdown, right? You can't have that. You, you need balanced scoring. You go back to the week one loss to, to me, Fiddlers, right? They gave me Fiddlers a run for the money, right? That, that's one of the top teams, I think, in Div 6. So the fact that they did that, but again, like I said, they just got to get some more experience and more games under their belt, execute a little, little bit better, and they should be all right. All right, so, Brent, uh, among the own four teams right now, uh, the last one that will win a game is who? And do you have any of these teams? So we look at Nardogs, DG, uh, DG Shudas, and Winded Warriors. Are any of these teams playoff worthy? Can they get in as a last second playoff entrant? Okay, so I'm gonna see. I'm gonna say the DG. Is it Shudas? I thought it was Shudas, but right, Shudas. 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 Uh, I haven't yeah. got that confirmed yet. We'll figure it out. We'll say Shudas. We'll go Shudas. We'll say Shudas. Yeah, yeah. If I have to pick an old four team to make the postseason, it would be them. I mean, looking at their offense, they have the best offense out of all the other own four teams. I've I've seen the Nard Dogs. Um, I see Winning yeah. Warriors play. I, that, I so that's the team I haven't seen yet. Um, you have Arizona Wild. You have Arizona Cardinal uniforms. Okay, okay. No, I haven't seen them yet. I recognize the name or two, though, from the roster. Uh, again, I mean, there's 30 teams, right? So I'm not going to have a chance at this point of the season to see everybody yet, unfortunately. But to answer your question, I think the DG, DG Shotters would be the best team out of the bunch. I don't really see a playoff spot, though, for any of the own four teams right now. I yeah, think, I, I agree. They're going to they're gonna have to run it. They're going to have to run it now, Brent. I mean, you got six games left. I think the cutoff might That's be it. three, three wins. Well, and that's exactly right. Again, I hope I'm proven wrong. Just right now, it, it like the signs are looking good. Like the Winter Warriors, right? 25 points scored in, in, in four games. You could you could kind of forget about them. Like I said, DG Shot is right now 63 points. I mean, they've given up 118. But I mean, for in right now in group B, it's kind of the average. A couple of teams have given up more than 100, right? So I mean, the 63 point score for them is something big. Narn Dogs, 19 points. You're not going anywhere if you can't score in this league. So Right, right. Uh, it, it sets up well for them. Texas Wales, uh, who beat uh, Window Warriors, by the way, last week. Yeah. Um, could they run the table and end up being a higher seed? Because their schedule kind of gets leaned up a little bit. And they have potential. I think they have a decent defense. Their offense is efficient. And that's a good uh, a tonic to have in trying to get themselves a higher seed in the playoffs. See, I, I want to say yes. But then I, so I looked at the schedule, right, and when I was prepping for this. And, like, they got the tower, Towers FT. I, I like Towers FT. I wrote about them. In my, I wrote about them in my article. They're, they're a team that has a lot of size and a lot of speed. They're physical, right? I mean, they cut down on the turnovers to be a little better. Uh, what are you doing, Step Rose? I know we talked about last, last week on the podcast. That's a good team who the Texas Wales also have to face in the second half of the year. And then, and then Salsa and the Pepper, who's obviously one of the top teams as well. I, I don't think, as good as the Texas Wales have been so far, they, they, they're, they're a bit of a surprise, I guess you could say. I mean, they're they're one and one, and they face the meat of the schedule in the second half of the season. So I, I don't see them running the table. Well, here's the thing, right? You, you, above them is tough. I mean, you got you mentioned like Salt and Pepper, Shumi TDs, mm-hmm. uh, Step Bros. They're all three wins right now. Speak yep. Easy, I think, is a little bit flimsy right now. I, I got to score keep a couple of their games. Uh, Tex, uh, Texas Texas Chuches, uh, same thing, and that's why this thing the Wales because they had a really like I think it was a fall cup or a spring season. One of the two, I, I think it was spring season. They had a good run in spring season as a Texas Wells. I remember them. And I remember them so, in spring season. Uh, I just yeah. think they, they could maybe make a run here. And 
I think six could be a solid number for them. They get six wins. I think that'd be a, a success for the regular season. But again, that division's tough. But again, it can lean up for them if they get things going their way with the the the, the remedy of their defense playing well and having an efficient offense to work with. Yeah, I mean, listen, like you said, right? I mean, their, their defense right now they're giving up twenty six points, right, in, in two games. That that's that's pretty good. I mean, no matter who you are, right? Yeah. So. I think they – do they have the, the talent to, to maybe run the table like you're talking about or, or at least have a strong finish? They do. I, I just think, again, the schedule, I guess, considerably tougher for them in the second half, especially that game against Salsa and the Pepper, right? That that team is no joke. Right. And again, same thing with, like, what are you doing step rolls? I have a, I've had a chance to, to watch them play, I believe, two games so far uh, this season, and I, I really like their team. They're deep. I mean, they have enough almost to field an offense and a defense separately, but, I mean – they have some playmakers, and I, I just don't think the Texas Wales are, are there just yet to be able to knock off those two teams. And again, like I said, Towers FT as well. Right now, the record is one in three. Their offense is looking pretty good. They gave up a lot on defense. They gave up the deep ball. I wrote about that, I believe, a week or two ago. The mm-hmm. deep ball defense isn't great, but they're a team that could score. I wonder, can the Texas Wales and their defense is given up, like we said, only 26 points? Can they hold a powerful offense like Towers FT and the other teams we're talking about? Um. Even though they lost to me, Fiddlers, uh, week one, does all ball have the most dynamic offense in Div 6? Good question. I mean, listen, they've scored 103 points, right? You look, I'm looking at it right now. How many other teams have over 100 points? There's one. There's show me them TDs, free agent squad, cheat squad. Four demons. teams. Yeah, right? So, I mean, and yeah, me, Fiddlers. Yeah. So... In that division for all ball, obviously they had the meat fillers there. They had the pigeons who we just finished talking about, right? In terms of being dynamic, yeah, they, they've shown that they, they, they could score points, right? They have a good mixture of speed and size, which is which is key in any any level of football, but especially here in FPF, right? Um, they have a little bit of experience on the roster. These guys like obviously quarterback Viran Patel, he's having some experience, uh, Emilio Baikas Jr., but then it's predominantly a bunch of rookies, right? So, I mean, they are dynamic. They can score points. It's just a matter now of looking at their record, right? They beat Jurassic Park Rangers. They they smoked, well, honestly, smoked. They 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 beat the McGill swim team. Uh, it's let's see what happens. I mean, their first big test, right? They lost in the meat fillers. So let's see what happens when they play a team like the Pigeons to finish a regular season. They and salt and pepper to too. They salt and pepper, and that's on back to back days, right? On, yeah. on March twenty fourth, they got salt and pepper, and March twenty fifth, they got the pigeons. I want to see what they do against teams like that, right? Again, I, I like this team. I'm not trying to disrespect them. I, I think all yeah. ball is a talented team. I've written about them already. Just I want to see what they do against the, the top notch competition in Div Six. Uh, by next week, the biggest headline Div Six will be what in your mind? Oh, that's a good question. Um, who are the true elite teams? In Division Six, right? I mean, we talked obviously about uh, last week and even this week, right? About about teams like the Meat Fillers and that. Um, it's it's a good question. Um, I think who? Okay, since it's going to be the official midway point of the season, right? I think we get into who can make that run because I think. So obviously there's going to be a lot of first year teams, right? The first the teams that are, are brand new to FPF. When you reach the midway point of the season, right? You want to kind of know where you're going. You want to have the identity of your team kind of mapped out by that point, right? So, how many upsets are we going to see? Are, are we going to see a team like the Meat Fillers lose to the, the Super the Turbo Navettes? We're going to see a team like the Devons uh, make a run. And you look right here, a big matchup, right? Next Monday, right after the Super Bowl, show me them TDs against Salt and Salt and a Pepper. Pardon me. That's going to be a huge game. I think whoever wins that is going to grab the biggest headline in terms of who could be one of those teams that for sure is going to be in that top one, two, and three in Division Six. So I think that I think the, the winner of Show Me Them TDs against Salsa and Pepper that's going to be the main headline in terms of can that team then now go all the way. I think the biggest headline will be will College Shanahan beg Kirk Cousins by the third quarter comes down for the Niners after the game on Sunday night to be part of the Niners next season. I think the biggest question will be after the Super Bowl is who will be the Raiders quarterback because, you know, the team is going nowhere fast. And as long as Mo Khan is your team, we're going nowhere. We beat, uh, so we beat you when it counts, you know, in the regular we season, you, last, the last battle of the Bay. We're in the Super Bowl last time I checked. You guys have been watching us on TV for now. Whatever. Sure. Sure. Whatever, whatever, whatever makes you go. Whatever makes you go whatever. there, Brent. Is that uh, a quarterback for you guys well? Yeah, middle linebacker too? And head coach? Don't worry about what, what we do, my friend. Don't worry about what we do. Jimmy, um, Jimmy, 
Don't worry about that, my friend. You're lucky to be in Vegas, to be in our city. Um, <laughs> what do you have lined up for Div Six for articles for an article coming out in the next week or so? I know I'm lucky. Okay, so mid season, right? I mean, obviously a lot of teams in the mid, a lot of uh, writers, I should say, do the mid season report. I, I want to do that, but I, I want to look more at who's been the MVP for each team, who's been the MVP, and where do I think each team will go in the second half of the season. So that's Fair enough, Brent. Good. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Enjoy your chicken wings and whatever else you're going to do, and uh, make sure you give your girlfriend a nice uh, dinner on uh, on uh, Wednesday at the Alibi. <laughs> Let's go Niners, and uh, I will enjoy the game. Hopefully it's a good game. I think, again, the KC defense is as good as it's ever been. San Fran's offense is as good as it's ever been. As long as Kyle Shanahan doesn't forget to run the ball and the Niners play a full game instead of playing only the second half, I think we have a good chance. But, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes, right? So you never know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Brent, thank you so much. We'll uh, talk soon, whether it's with Iggy or myself next week then. All right, be good. Have a good one. Bam, bam, none again. Let's go. Yeah, sure, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> Brent Bakken on with us. Check out his article for Div 6. He had, he had one uh, posted up uh, on Feb 6 that it was. A uh, very article that he had talking about the season and all. So thank you to Brent for being on with us here. Uh, that'll do it for us here uh, for this episode of Calling the Audible with uh, your truly Mo Khan. Uh, I did see Iggy kind of pop through for a couple of seconds, but I guess he's not coming on with us. But uh, we'll assume he's going to decline. And he'll have Thursday's show. You have Dan Lazara, Raf Morelli on with him. Uh, he will have uh, Jerome Hobbington as well. Uh, Zachary Alberts Gill will be on with him as well. So look forward to that. So check out that on Thursday. That'll be posted Friday. Um, don't forget a uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Remember, it's an abbreviated schedule. So check the schedule. We last games are four o'clock on Sunday. So you'll be out by five o'clock and on your way to your parties or party that you might have for the Super Bowl on February 11th. Uh, again, a reminder, please double check your rosters for the games played for for your team because we're almost at the halfway point and you need five to be playoff eligible for the winter playoffs in mid-April. Um, check out the rule now on the penalty call for those who go into the other, other fields. So you must control your momentum when you make a tackle or make a play on offense and not go into the other field because that will be costly for you of a 10-year penalty. And again, last but not least, we'll finish off team photos this week, and we'll get to you if you if you don't have your picture yet, and we'll make that happen for you as well. So without further ado, I want to thank the Nightingale and Omar for their job well done behind the scenes. A little bit of odd chaos as we had tonight, as usual, but don't worry about it. It's normal for us here at FBF. A big thank you to Longy Wallet for coming on with us. Uh, Manu Alahua, talk about Div 3, Lori for co-eds. Uh, Jerome, uh, Jerome, uh, Jeff Rosenblatt for Div 2, and Brent Bakken now for Div 6. Uh, check out Grant's article coming out at some point this week. Manu as well. Lahi will have social media stuff posted off of the week. And Jeff Rosebutt will come and recruit you for his team down the road. So on behalf of the staff and crew here, we wish you a great week. And check out Iggy's podcast on Thursday with Lazara, Morelli, Hovington, Albert Skill, and whoever else is on that show and his Super Bowl thoughts and his trip down in Orlando. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>